All right. Uh, <coughs> Dr. Zach spelled out for us last week just the incredible power of stem cells and some of the latest research that is going on. Uh, Zach, anything else you want to add? Because you didn't hear any of that in advance. Right. Well, a lot of the stuff that he was talking about um, is on the ball. Uh, but there is some stuff that uh, I checked up on uh, just to verify that what he was saying was accurate. He mentioned that it wasn't when you played it today, but last week he mentioned there are 72 applications for adult stem cells and none for embryonic stem cells. And on the face of it, that seems, you know, wow, you know, why are we even thinking about embryonic stem cells? I looked into where he got that statistic. He didn't mention it when he was talking to you, but there's, I found it on a website called stemcellresearch.org. And they have, um, it's kind of facetious, they have a graphic of a football scoreboard and they've got you know, adult stem cells 72 and embryonic stem cells 0. If you see that, just click on that, that and it gives you a list of 72 different diseases that stem cells have been used in. Um, the problem was I actually went and looked up all the references for all these diseases and I have a list here if anybody wants to see it. The vast majority of these diseases um, were used, uh, the application was bone marrow transplant. Most, all the cancers, most of the uh, immune disorders, autoimmune disorders, all those things, bone marrow transplant is a very common procedure and it's used in a lot of applications. And they were counting every single disease as an extra application of that, which is doesn't seem quite to me to be Accurate. It's like saying that there's a million uses for band-aids because you can use a band-aid if you get a cut, if you get a scrape, or if you get a rash, or you know. So, in actuality, I, I tallied up. There are a million uses of duct tape. I do want yeah. to use those right. Yeah. I, I went ahead and tallied it all up, and the actual number is 12. There are 12 separate uh, applications of adult stem cells okay. uh, to zero of embryonic stem cells. But even that, um, it's important to recognize that. Adult stem cells, especially hematopoietic stem cells, which is what <coughs> are used for bone marrow transplant, we've had access to those since the 60s. And the first embryonic stem cell line was developed in 1998. So it's been a very short amount of time that we've actually had access to embryonic stem cells. And it's also important to realize that in 1995, federal funding for embryonic stem cells was banned by Bill Clinton, actually. And so even before we had them developed, we could not use federal funds to use them. So there's been a moratorium on embryonic stem cell use in this country as far as federal funding goes since before we even had them. So when you take that into perspective, it seems a little bit more reasonable that there might be 12 applications of adult stem cells and none yet of embryonic stem cells. Okay. The other thing you mentioned was uh, the fact that it's been, uh, nobody in the private sector has been working with it. That's not entirely true either. There is the Geron Corporation, um, which is doing a lot of embryonic stem cell work, actually, doing a lot of research. And it very well may be that, sort of like how Genentech was the lone player back in the 70s when recombinant DNA technology first came out, and people were scared of that, too, recombinant DNA and bacteria. Now we use it all the time. You know, most diabetics use recombinant insulin. Uh, but Genentech was the first pioneer in the private sector back in the 70s, now recombinant DNA is all over the place. It very well may be that the Geron Corporation is going to be like that. You know, 20 years from now, there might be a huge amount of that. But it's also important to re remember, as I said last time, that most of the basic research done in this country is done on the federal you know, dollar. And there's a lot of stuff that still needs to be done. Even with the, uh, he mentioned the adult stem cell applications for Parkinson's disease. Yeah, the, there, there are a couple, but they're very, very small so far they, they need to be worked on and uh, the AAS report concludes that look we need to investigate everything uh, if you there's a lot more there's a there's a pretty good ethical and moral uh, analysis in that report if you go to that uh, I gave you the link last week read through that report it is really quite good and comprehensive 